Hey everybody, Jeremy here. So today I got another Joy Toy figure. This is a new line to me and I'm currently pretty high on it because these are small, around four inch scale figures, but the detail is really good and the articulation is really good. And I was waiting for this one to come back in stock on Amazon so I can pick it up. And I did a little over $30 for this guy. And it is called the Risen Rego or Ryzen Rego, not too sure. But that's not important. What's important is the way that he looks and all of the cool things that comes with him. So let's just open him up right here. You can see we got the figure in the little window box along with all the accessories that he comes with. And I really do like the way that this is packaged because it doesn't have all of those little plastic ties and stuff that you have to deal with. Everything comes out really, really easily. So I did another review on another figure. The first one that I experienced uh, of this line flying calvary type b that's this figure right here so if you want to see the review on him i'm going to leave a card so that you can check out the review on this figure but now let's open this guy up and um i got some high expectations so let's check it out all right so let's take a look at this guy now just like the last joy toy figure that i reviewed the thing that really stands out to me the most about these figures is that they are so well detailed to be in this three and three quarter inch scale the detail in these guys absolutely wonderful and i was really really into this particular character because he has these metal arms, this, this sort of metal exoskeleton structure. So you can see he's got two metal arms there. And then also in the front, you see he's got like that, kind of like that metal chest as well. And I think that's a really, really cool look. We take a look at the first figure that I reviewed, very much a soldier, you know? But this guy, I mean, he just looks like he's part of just some kind of elite squad all, all of his own, you know? And he just, comes around to help everybody out with his unique skill set. Speaking of which, let's take a look at some of the accessories. First accessory here is gonna be this sword. Um, it is a pretty cool, it's a decent looking sword. It's, it has this uh, gold paint job to it, which is kind of a running theme with this particular figure. Uh, he has gold accessories um, in addition to his actual outfit. So he can rock that sword and then also over here, he also has this gold vest that we're going to put on him. And then he also has this jetpack. Now this jetpack is a little bit different than the jetpack that came on this guy. Uh, structurally it's the same, but it has a little bit of a different paint job in this like kind of caution tape that's around those boosters there. It's a little bit different than the other guy, but it still has that same little system where you just peg this into the back, or in this case, the back of his vest, because there is no hole on his actual back, thank goodness. So you can simply put on the vest, then attach the jetpack. He also comes with a, a foot locker. He comes with his foot locker here, and this is where you can store some accessories. So I went ahead and put some of the smaller accessories in there. So he has this alternate head right here. If you want to get rid of the human head and just have the helmeted head, you can do that. So that comes with it. He also has a gun. This is like his primary weapon. Once again, different uh, from the figure that I just showed because that one doesn't have a scope. And then he also comes with a pair of binoculars, a few different interchangeable hands. They're very small, but you know, they're interchangeable hands. You know what those are like. And then he also has his own little pistol here. And just like the last figure, you know, it just clips to um, a clip that's already on his pan. So you can just put that on there. But the whole thing about this pistol is, as good of a, of a job that they did with the detail of the character and the paint of the character, this pistol is not very well painted. You can tell that it's, it's completely black as it's molded and they just sort of spray painted some gold on there, but there's a whole lot of overspray from the top of the pistol leading, leading into the, um, into like where the handle is and where the trigger is. So they didn't do a very great job with that, but again, it's got that gold motif to it. Apologies if you hear trickling in the background. That is my arrow garden growing some microgreens. All right, so let's take this sword off of him. 
and let's put on this vest that he has. Cool thing about the vest is flexible, it's stretchy, so you don't have to take off any parts in order to get it on. It just literally goes above his head like this. And then on the side, let's move his arm out of the way. On the side, you can probably see that there's these little uh, clasps that you can just connect in order to secure it. Let me see if I can do one side on camera. I probably can't. All right, so I'm not gonna spend any more time trying to get that connected, but you can get it connected uh, if you just give it a little bit of time. And then you can take the jet pack and just connect the jet pack to the back and then boom, there you go. That is the look. Alternatively, if you don't want him to have the human head, you can just pop that off put on the helmeted head and there you go. So this makes him look so much more different than uh, some of the other figures that I've seen also in this line uh, simply because that gold, that's what's gonna make him really, really stand out. So I thought that that is a cool look for him. Now let's take off this jetpack, and we'll also take off well, everything, including his head. Let's just put his head back on. All right. And we can just kind of go over some articulation. Now that's another thing about these figures that I think is really, really great. It's the articulation that they have, you know, this small scale, but they're so flexible. So let's see what this guy can do. Doesn't have anything hindering him because he doesn't have a shirt on. So uh, no hindrance at all. So let's move those arms up like that. We got ourselves a single jointed elbow on both sides, but look at that. You can definitely move those arms so close to the chest like that. And I love that because it helps to get some pretty cool poses with weapons so it can look more realistic. And it kind of sort of solves the problem of the lack of flexibility when you don't have double jointed elbows. So that's awesome. Now uh, let's take a look at this head. See how high he can move that head up like that. See how far he can move the head down. I think that that is good. Um, of course, you got that bend, that abdominal bend. That's great going forward. This far going back. Look at that. I mean, it's a lot of flexibility, a lot of flexibility. Now we're getting to the legs. And before I really get to the legs, I do want to tell you that uh, one of the complaints that I've read about in different reviews for these characters is fragility. And sometimes parts can fall off and some people have gotten a little bit frustrated and discouraged with these figures because they're not too sure if what they're gonna get is gonna be solid or not. Um, and I've run into a little bit of an issue with that. It's not a big issue, but I do have to point it out. So as we come down here to the legs, you can see we can bend those legs. It's a nice little bend. Come over here. We can bend that leg and then there you see his kneecap, his kneecap just falls off for me. Now it's not difficult to just pop his kneecap piece right back on. So I just popped his knee piece back on and it's not difficult to do, it's in there flush, but it's just a little um, QC error with this guy for that knee to just be able to pop out like that. Um, as I guess as far as having a figure that is not staying together as well as it should be, a little knee piece like this, you know, like, well, if you're going to have a problem, then something like this would, you know, probably be one that would be ideal to have instead of it being like an arm or a leg or, you know, just something that's really important. But it still kind of sucks that he's broken in that way. But besides the amazing detachable kneecap, everything else about this figure I really, really enjoy. I think that has a really awesome and unique look. I think that these two head scopes are done really, really well. The articulation that he has is just wonderful. It's just unfortunate that that knee won't stay on. Just one more thing I kind of want to point out. If you want him to wear this vest, you have to take off the the alternate head because the alternate head is a... Uh, it's, it's too bulky for that vest to fit over. So you'll have to take off the head first 
and then put the vest on and then you'll be able to put the head on like that. Attach the jetpack and you'll be good to go. So yeah, that is it you guys. That is my review of this figure. I know he probably looks a little bit weird right now in a very odd proportions because I don't have them posed properly, but I really do think that these Joy Toy figures, these soldiers, Battle for the Stars line, and these other lines that I've seen them uh, have, and with the mechs and everything, I think these are really fantastic figures. Might be a little bit pricey for the fact that they're three and three quarters and they tend to cost around $35 or so. But if you wanna come into it a little bit more reserved, get a figure here and there, you really wanna start to build up a collection, it's definitely something that you can do over time if you don't wanna just outright break the bank coming right out the gate. All right, so I highly doubt that this will be the last Joy Toy figure that I get, but whichever one or ones that I pick up in the future, I'll be sure to bring more reviews to you so you can see how they are. All right, so that is it. Thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, I'm Jeremy. Talk to you later.